Hi there, boys and girls. Uh, we're back again for the second measurement lesson in chemistry. And this one happens to deal with significant figures. Um, when we talked about accuracy and precision, uh, reliability, repeatability in the last lesson, uh, when we talked about uh, precision, uh, we said, well, it's measured with sig figs and, and we'll just deal with that later on. Well, uh, now it's later on, so we do have to kind of figure out what sig figs or significant figures or significant digits, because you'll see this wide range of names for this thing, uh, what it actually is. All right. Um, sig figs, like I said, are, is, a, is a measure of precision for us. Um, so essentially, if you look right here, uh, this statement kind of sums it all up. Uh, the more significant figures you have, uh, the more precision you can have. And typically by significant figures, I know the word significant bothers people, um, but typically by significant, we mean that those figures are actually measured. Because when you look at numbers, um, in some measurement numbers, the numbers that are present are actually measured. You took them off the equipment. In some measurements, are this there mathematically, and they weren't actually measured. So significant figures separates out what's measured, what's not measured, and helps you get a precise number. Now, if you notice, this is kind of a big disclaimer. Um, calculators will get you in trouble with sig figs. Um, there are very few calculators that will actually do significant figure calculations for you. Otherwise, it's just something you have to do once you've pushed the buttons on your magic box and gotten a mathematical answer. So um, I know people like to rely on your calculator, uh, but that doesn't always work when it comes to sig figs. Okay. Um, one thing with significant figures, there's a number of rules. And when we apply these rules, what we're really trying to do is figure out how many significant digits are in a number first. Because uh, before you can go on and do anything mathematical, multiplication, division, times, addition, uh, you have to figure out um, how many significant figures am I actually juggling. So on this slide are the set of uh, significant figure rules. And usually the first time we go through the rules, students they look at it and they say, that, that is the dumbest thing I have ever heard. Um, you know, I understand that numbers count, like the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 count. But then you have all this mumbo jumbo about zeros, trailing zeros, leading zeros, trapped zeros, or um, zeros between digits. And so we have to get used to these rules first. So rule number one is literally that any non-digit or non-zero digit, one through nine, counts. You have to have measured it. There's nowhere else that digit can come from. Rule number two, leading zeros do not count. That would be these zeros right here that are in front of a number. And I know the first argument people always make is, yeah, but if you take them away, it's not the same number. No, that's true, but none of those zeros are measured. Um, you didn't actually take them off the measurement equipment. Okay. Trailing zeros count if there's a decimal. So right there's the decimal. These are what are called final zeros after the decimal. In other words, somebody decided on the measurement equipment um, that their answer actually went out that far. Um, the big one with this is calculators will drop those off. So if you were to enter this number in the calculator and try and do anything with it, those two zeros after the 25 would be gone. Uh, trailing zeros, if there are no decimals, more than likely don't count. Sometimes in certain science situations they do, but for us, and the things that we do, um, they're not going to count for us at all. So anytime we're dealing with sig figs, uh, we've got to be able to know those rules first. So let's try this one. Okay, it's a random decimal number, 0 0.0050830. Can you tell me what 
figures are actually significant in this number. And you can stop the slideshow or the video if you want and try and figure it out. Okay. But here are significant numbers. Okay. First of all, remember, all non-zero digits count. So that means the 5, the 8, the 3, uh, they all count as being measured. They have to. They have to come from somewhere. Number two, zeros in between non-zeros count. So that's that zero. Let's put on the old pen here. That's that zero right there. It's caught between the five and the eight. Um, it had to be measured if it's between those two numbers. Okay. Trailing zeros count when there's a decimal. That means that's a trailing zero. In other words, somebody measured it specifically enough to say after this three, um, there needs to be another measurement spot. Leading zeros don't count. So these ones in the front, all they do is hold place value. They don't really count. Now, as soon as you do that with a number, pe people will look at it and say, well, who really cares? Um, the important thing to take away right now is this number has five sig figs in it or five significant digits. The five, the zero, the eight, the three, and the zero. Those are all measured numbers, so it would have a, a precision level of five. Um, that's better than having a precision level of only three or four, um, but it's not as good as having a precision level of six or seven. Um, so really, just to do this with a single number and say, oop, there it is, uh, is meaningless, unless I have another number to compare it to, or I'm going to do something in terms of multiplication, division, addition, or subtraction. So let's look at what happens when you actually multiply, divide, add, and subtract. Okay, first of all, the downer kind of is that if you're going to do addition and subtraction problems, significant figures really don't matter. I know it's a letdown. If you're doing multiplication and division, significant figures matter. So we go through all of this and you're like, oh, I'm trying to understand this significant figure stuff. And then you figure out, well, for half the time when we're doing um, math processes, it doesn't matter. All right. So I always know that it's kind of a letdown, but or you look at me sort of funny, um, but that's OK. OK, so let's talk about adding and subtracting. All right. When we add and subtract. Um, lots of times what we have to do is adjust an, an answer. Um, our answer can only be as good as the weakest link that's in the problem. And by weakest link, I mean the least precise or, or best number. Okay, so I give you a couple of examples here. So let's say we add these three numbers together. All right. Right here, they indicate this is, this is my least precise one according to decimal places. Um, it only goes out one place beyond the decimal. Uh, this one right here goes out to hundreds. This one right here goes out to thousands. This number right here only goes to tens. So that means my answer can only go to tens. But if I punch this in the calculator, that's what I get for an answer. I get this really precise answer out to um, thousands place. Okay, well, we can't make this wonderfully precise answer out of something right here that wasn't very precise. And so what we do is we have to stop the answer at the least precise position, which would be tenths. All right, so that means I'm going to stop my answer right here. Um, we do always round. So we look at the place behind this and think, well, you know, really, instead of 0.8, that should be 0.9. Now, essentially, this answer meets the level of that problem or that part of the problem right there. If we do it in this one, okay, this goes out two places. So we're out tenths, hundreds. Okay, it's fairly precise. This one goes out tenths. Um, this one doesn't go out past the decimal at all. The decimal is right there and there's nothing past it. So it really, it's in the ones position. That means my answer can't go past the decimal. So here's my answer. All of a sudden, I've got an answer that's out to hundreds again. I've got a really precise answer. 
And um, I can't keep that because this number right here was not precise. And so since this one only goes out to one's place, I've got to cut off my answer here at one's place. And really this digit right here um, doesn't round this at, at all. Okay. So addition and subtraction may look an awful lot like some things that you've done in math class before. All right, now, if you're doing multiplication and division, uh, we need to make a slightly different adjustment. We have to worry about how many sig figs are in an answer. So your answer can have the same amount of sig figs as the, the weak link or the worst number in the problem. So if I look at this problem, okay, 1.008 has a precision or a sig fig level of four. The one and the eight both count. These two zeros are trapped in between. They both count. This number has a precision level of three. Okay, the four, the six, the seven, they all count. And I multiply a number with a precision level of four, a number with a precision level of three, and I get an answer that has a precision level of one, two, three, four, five, six. All of a sudden, I have this way precise number that I just made out of two numbers that weren't all that precise at all. So in this number, all I can keep is three sig figs. So the four, the seven, the zero, that's about where my number has to cut off. Now I know the next digit was a seven, so I do round that zero up to a one. All right, so the rounding works the way, same way, the cutoff works the same way, but rather than worrying about how many decimal places they go out to, um, we need to worry about what level of significance or precision happens. Okay, so here's a practice set of problems for you. I know the other day we talked about worksheets and how ah, worksheets aren't always good in science, but every so often you've got these processes come along that you do have to try. All right, so it gives you some practice with, um, gives you some practice here with working through and just saying this is how many sig figs there are. Right. There's some addition problems to try. Um, there's some multiplication and division problems to try. All right, uh, as you go through some of these and you give them a shot, uh, the next slide in the show has all the answers so you're able to check your problems. All right, good luck. Um, that's enough measurement for now, and I will see you later.